Welcome to Electron Line. Now in this example, we're trying to find the force required to get the 300 pound block to start moving. So what is keeping that block from moving? It is the friction between the block and the floor and the friction between this block and the block that's resting on top of it. Now this block cannot move because it's attached to the wall right here. It's prevented from moving. So what we can see here is we're going to have two friction forces. We're going to have a friction force over here. Let's call that friction force one. And we're going to have a friction force here. Let's call that friction force two. Why are both friction forces directed to the left? Because friction forces tend to try to prevent the motion from happening. Since the motion is going to be in this direction without friction, the friction force acts in the opposite direction to try and stop that motion from happening. So how do we determine the friction force one and friction force two? Well, what we need to do is we need to find the normal force on this surface right here and the normal force right here. In other words, and let me use a blue color here, let's call this the normal force one. The normal force one is going to be the reactionary force to the weight of both blocks. Both blocks are pushing against the floor here, so the normal force is going to be the sum of these two weights. It's going to be the 200 pound weight plus the 300 pound weight. So the normal force between the floor and this block right here is going to be 500 pounds. The normal force between these two blocks right here is simply going to be caused by the weight of the block on the top. So we can say that normal force 2 is simply going to be equal to the reactionary force to the weight of the block on top, therefore 200 pounds. Now from that we can find both friction forces. We know by definition that the friction force, and let's start with friction force 1, is equal to the normal force times the coefficient of friction. In this case the static coefficient because nothing is moving. We want to find the force up to the point where everything will begin to move. So this is equal to the normal force of 500 pounds times the coefficient of friction is 0 0.4, which is 200 pounds. The, oh, I don't need the S there. So 200 pounds is the friction force between the bottom block and the ground. Friction force 2 is equal to the normal force between the two blocks times the coefficient of friction, which is the same. We're assuming that 0.4 is the coefficient of friction between the two blocks and between the bottom block and the surface. So this is going to be 200 pounds times 0 0.4, which is 80 pounds. And therefore, the total friction is equal to friction force 1 plus friction force 2, which is 200 pounds plus 80 pounds, which is 280 pounds. That's the maximum friction you can have in total between this block and the surface and between the two blocks. And therefore, the minimum force required to get everything moving is that the force has to be at least 280 pounds plus a small smidgen to get things to move. So therefore, we can say that the minimum force required is equal to 280 pounds plus a small smidgen, and then the whole thing will begin to move. And that's how we figure out the total friction force on a situation like this. Now in the next example, we're going to make things a little bit more complicated to see how then things work, what would the force require to get things to move when the two blocks are actually linked together through a pulley system. So if you want to see what that looks like, stay tuned, and you'll get the more complicated example.